One of the things that investors should do, but often don't, is the obvious one. They should be buying low and selling high. That way you make a profit. The problem is, plenty of studies show that what investors tend to do, especially retail investors, is the exact opposite. It's not always their fault, but they tend to be drawn into buying high and selling low. And obviously that's not a good way to make a profit. So for the last video of 2012, I want to cover a simple way you can help yourself to avoid exactly that problem. The problem of selling low and buying high when what you want to be doing is buying low and selling high. And it's called rebalancing your portfolio. And it's something that you ought to think about doing on a regular basis. So I'm going to cover in simple terms what rebalancing is and leave you um, with a thought about how to go about it. So rebalancing is this sort of idea. Imagine you've set up a simple portfolio. Now the asset allocations I'm about to give you, um, I'm not going to cover how you get to them. That would fill five or six more videos. I'm going to assume you've already arrived at your preferred asset allocations. What I mean by that is you've decided for argument's sake that shares will make up 50% of your portfolio. Bonds Okay, it could be a mixture of government and corporate, will make up, let's say, 30% of your portfolio. All right, and then because you like to keep a little bit of firepower back, you've got cash at 10%, and you're also happy to invest in one or two what might be called alternatives. Okay, perhaps you like a little bit of gold in your portfolio, so that's 10%. All right, now, that all adds up to 100%, and there are already a few things missing. Some of you might be saying, where's property? Well, I'm going to make an assumption that if you've got a property, a house, for example, even with a mortgage, you've got some equity in property. You're already exposed to property. So this is your investment portfolio, excluding the house, let's say, that you live in. All right? And one or two of you might say, what about buy to let? What about this? What about that? But the point is not the asset allocation. It is, or well, what should you do when it changes? That's the subject of this video, it's called rebalancing. Very, very simple idea. All right, it does help you to avoid the problem of piling into assets when they're expensive, okay, and dumping them potentially when they're cheap, when you should be doing the exact opposite. So let's say there's your asset allocation, 50, 30, 10, and 10. And what happens is very simple. A year later, you look at your portfolio and you find that actually shares have had a good year. So they now make up 60% of your portfolio. Bonds have had a bad year, and they now make up 20% of your portfolio. Well, let's say around 10% still in cash. Okay, cash has good optionality. It enables you to take advantage of opportunities. It's also a buffer if things go wrong. And alternatives have stayed roughly around 10%. Now, you could just say, so what? Uh, 60 plus 20 plus 10 plus 10 is still 100. Well, what's your point, Tim? Well, the point is this, all right, shares, presumably, have gone up in value. Bonds have gone down in value. Now, here's the point. Here's the point about good contrarian investing principles, is that you, know, you want to be adjusting your portfolio, ideally, back roughly to your target allocation, which will have the benefit of meaning you will buy some bonds when they're cheap, sell some equities when they may be getting expensive, and maintain your target weighting. So, very, very simply, rebalancing is just saying, I want to get back to an allocation of 50, 30, 10, and 10. So what I need to do is sell, okay, to get back to my allocation of 50% shares and put the proceeds into uh, my bond portfolio, whether that's uh, invested in funds or directly one by one if it's big enough. Okay, so you literally um, sell some of your shares, buy some bonds, get yourself back around to, it's not always possible to be bang on with these things, to around the original 50% there and the original 30% there. Okay, now, how often should you do this exercise? There's an obvious drawback, right? Um, the drawback is it costs money, all right? If you do this too often, any benefit you get from rebalancing the portfolio will be frittered away in transaction costs, dealing costs, bid offer spreads, if you're buying shares, stamp duty, and the like. Okay, so I'd recommend that once a year, 
for most retail investors, unless the market's incredibly volatile, is often enough. Because you want to get the benefits of rebalancing, pocketing a little bit of profit on your shares, buying the bonds when they've dropped in value and got cheaper, that's good contrarian principles, but you don't want to do it too often because any gain that you make will just be eaten up with charges, fees, taxes, and so on. And when do you apply it? Okay, well, I've said once a year, but you could apply it both on this sort of macro big picture level, but also within your share portfolio. If you've got a, a share in here, okay, that's, that's a runaway success, you want to be looking at that share and saying, well, maybe it's time to rebalance. So maybe you've got uh, 10 shares in there, each comprising you know, 10% of your equity allocation. One of them's you know, doubled over the last 12 months. Maybe that's the one you want to trim and reinvest in other shares in the portfolio. Okay? Or take that money off the table and reinvest it in bonds. So you can do rebalancing at two levels, this sort of portfolio level, and then within okay, the allocation that you're looking at. All right? So there it is. Very, very basic rebalancing. Um, those people looking for videos on asset allocation and some hints on asset allocation, which is where this all begins, could maybe take a look at the Money Week Basics email series by clicking the link below this video. Okay, And I want to finish this week just by mentioning, because it's Christmas, a couple of Christmas quiz challenges, which I'll answer in the first video of the new year. Okay, Here they are. In this week's edition of Money Week, you'll find a Christmas quiz, okay? And one of the questions in it is as follows. So subscribers will be able to get the answer before everyone else who watches the video next year. Who was Norman Lamont's special economic advisor around the time Britain was kicked out of the ERM? And question number two is, can you put nine dots down in a square. So grab a piece of paper, grab a napkin over the Christmas table, okay, and uh, draw yourself nine dots like that. They should be in a square, by the way, that's not a perfect square. Then here's your challenge, very simple. Can you connect all nine dots using four straight lines without removing your pen from the paper and without doubling back on yourself? So that isn't allowed because that's removing your pen from the paper. So there it is, the nine dot challenge. Can you connect all nine dots using just four straight lines? Once your pen goes down, it's got to stay down and you can't double back. Okay, the answer will be given in the first quiz of the new year. In the meantime, have a very happy Christmas. To download this free video to your favourite mobile device, find us on iTunes by searching for Money Week. And the entire video archive is also available free. Just visit moneyweek.com.